I am Chris from Race Car Camp. We're building an early 1.8 head, um, BP05, and it's gonna get seals. The bottom end is gonna get rings and bearings. Uh, I'm gonna show you it's not too scary. I know a lot of guys tend to be scared of this. Um, the best specialty tool I'm gonna use today is a piece of cardboard and a Sharpie. So for starters, off with the valve cover. is I like to use these, uh, this is like a hundred dollar tool cart. See, I already have any other things in it. Then I have a place to put all my things in an orderly fashion. So the valve cover doesn't have to be super clean. You know, it's not for this ultra precision thing, so we're just gonna set that there. So as you can see in here, this engine has an unfortunate lot of gum. Um, and that is one of the reasons we are doing a full rebuild on it. Time cover comes off. All right, I'm gonna use an impact 21 millimeter on the crank bolt. Your mileage may vary. All right, and then we gotta take the timing belt off. 14 millimeter on the tensioner. Loosen spring here that we have to disconnect. And we're gonna put a new one of those on, but I just like to save everything. You never know when you're gonna have to come back to something that was broken and replace it. So we'll just pop the tensioner off, put it in our drawer. I would argue that was probably on too tight. Well, that's the roller. Our belt comes off. I'm gonna take the cam angle sensor off, which is two twelves at the rear to loosen the cap, and then it should slide off. Put this in the drawer, but keep this on the head as it's part of the cam assembly, and I wanna keep that all in the same spot. And then it's important to note the orientation that it goes on as it only goes on one way. And there we go. Actually, I may use this heavy duty engine degreaser because then it will go back down into the oil pan and I'll be able to collect it instead of it ending up all over on my shop floor. Don't do this around anything painted that you like because it will eat your paint. And then we let it sit for 10 minutes. I am gonna pop the gear off. So we got this off the intake side. So I'm marking the intake I, all right? E. And in the drawer. Now the cover. Next up is the thermostat neck. Now, to change the thermostat, you can just take this off. We're gonna go all the way back here and keep it as one piece. By the way, this whole motor is 10s, 12s, and 14s. There's not, not a lot in here. When you take your fuel rail off, pay close attention to the little spacers as you are gonna need them again. Again, don't run any one of these out right away. Crack them all.
Too many Miata motors. Those need cleaned. Everything gets marked. We have two, four, six, eight, ten head bolts. So we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to label it intake and exhaust. The head studs are the most inside bolt will be taking off so they're going to go inside but next to all the numbers now that they're loose buzz right out now each one of these has a washer okay so that was one so it goes in one Then we just keep going. Two. My apologies here as the camera battery died for the overhead camera here, but it's very simple. Each one of those cam caps is a 10 millimeter nut. You're just going to loosen all of them, a uh, quarter turn for each one, and then you go back and chase them all once they're loose so that they're just sitting in the hole. And then I'll use that little hammer to just massage out the cam caps, knocking them back and forth with small tiny movements as you don't want to knock anything too out of whack. It's hard to see in the film here, but each cam cap is marked. It's stamped with an intake or exhaust marking and its number on the head. Before you disassemble, you should check to make sure yours are stamped, and if they're not, you should mark them. These are lifters. They have little shims under them that you don't want to get out of order, so you label everything before we go and pull the valves out. So intake one corresponds with intake one. It's going to go in this tray. You see how we have everything laid out. Again, your magnet tool is going to be your best friend here.
So this is our spring compressor. It does two different types of uh, valves. We're gonna put it on, compress, and then tighten the T-bar and the little keepers will come out of each of the valves and we'll be able to pull the spring valve and keepers out, we'll put them in our tray, and we'll do the other side. It's a good idea to give them just a little tap before you get going with something soft rounded. See how that's soft, centered. And just to break up the keepers that have been on there for, you know, 180. 180,000 miles or so. Okay, then spring retainer. See how it has a seat? Spring, in pretty good shape, all things considering the mileage. And the keepers go in there. That is a valve. Nope, YouTube. Ba boom, first valve out. going to save them, uh, though we're not going to reuse them, just to see how things come out, see if anything needs anything. We're going to put our head in a tote with a bunch of simple green and some hot water and bristle brush it and it's going to suck, but it's going to come out really clean. When scrubbing down your aluminum head, you have to be sure that every brush you use is either nylon or brass. You'll see me use nylon to clean up some of the combustion debris, and you'll see me use brass to clean up the aluminum mating surface. Do not use steel, you'll gouge it, and you could risk warping the head. Okay, so here's the head. I'm just drying it off and cleaning some of the rest of the, the chunks out. And I wanted to stop here because I made a critical mistake that I'm hoping you will avoid. You'll notice on some of these valves, there's some uh, additional rings sitting here. They go under the springs. Um, I did not clearly grab all of them before putting them in the tank. And the rings go over the post, and then the springs come in on top of the post. So be smart, don't be like me, and check this before you get busy cleaning. Minor crisis averted as I thought I had lost those in my gravel driveway, but we're okay. So I'll measure, put them in, and we'll start reassembly. <laughs> 